Thanks for joining us in the Walker Emissions Control Lab. We're up to step number five of vehicle emissions diagnostics, checking for exhaust system restrictions. I've asked Troy Sawada, a member of the Tenneco and Walker team, to cover this process for us. Thanks, Joe. Excessive system back pressure can generate a converter efficiency code and turn on the vehicle's check engine light. I'll go through some quick tests to help determine if there is a system restriction and then pinpoint its location. The first is to measure engine vacuum. Once you've installed your gauge, you should have a reading of about 17 to 20 inches of vacuum at idle. Now accelerate to between 2,000 and 3,000 RPM and watch what happens to your reading. If it drops by more than two or three inches, you probably have blockage in the exhaust system. The most common areas for blockage are in the exhaust pipes, the muffler, and the converter. The exhaust pipes should be easy to check. But to find a restriction in the muffler, such as broken internal partitions, you'll need to either remove the rear O2 sensor or drill a hole somewhere behind the converter to take a back pressure reading. At idle, most applications should have less than 1 PSI of back pressure at this location. If it is much higher, say 2 or 3 PSI, you'll know that there is a blockage in the muffler or the tailpipe. If back pressure is okay, move forward for a reading in front of the converter. If back pressure is high at this location, and you've already determined that you've got normal back pressure behind the converter, then the restriction is within the converter itself. Some late model vehicles also have a pre-converter position closer to the engine. This would be your next checkpoint if system back pressure is okay at the converter and muffler. What kind of blockage would you encounter at the converter? Most often, it's caused by a melted or severely contaminated substrate, or perhaps by physical breakage related to a road impact or thermal shock. The topic of substrate breakage reminds me that it is a good idea to also check back pressure at higher RPMs, since sometimes there can be material in the exhaust that shifts position with higher flow rates. At 2500 RPM, most applications should have less than 3 PSI of back pressure. And remember, the job is not done until you have corrected the condition which caused the converter to fail. Okay, thanks. That's step 5 of the 13 steps of proper emissions diagnostics. Step six, checking for worn O2 sensors will be the focus of our next program. Be sure to join us.